<laughs> how, what, how did you start? Harvey, with all due respect, I was not, I never had a crush on Bob Fosse, and I was not seduced by him. However, I have an abiding passion for his choreography, and I always did. And he has been a wonderful, wonderful influence in my life. I was on scholarship to Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. And um, same kind of scenario as Louise's, where I was coming to New York um, in the summers with my ballet teacher from Pensacola, Florida, a little town, and um, studying and going back and working on my feet or my legs or whatever they said to uh, you know, goose up and make better. But um, I was taking a jazz class with a guy named Timmy Everett, which some of you may remember. Yes. Uh huh. Wonderful teacher. And I thought, God, this is exciting. You get to smile and you get to be sexy and all this stuff. So when Ballet Rusty Monte Carlo went defunct, they went bankrupt. And um, I was on scholarship, so I didn't know where to go. So I auditioned for a Broadway musical and I auditioned for How to Succeed. And I got, it, got, it was for a replacement, got down to two girls. And I'm standing there next to a tall, willowy, wonderful lady. And Mr. Fossey out there, or the stage manager, somebody said, um, Carolyn Kitch, stand forward, step forward. So I'm new in New York, and I thought, God, this is great. So I stepped forward, and so did she. <laughs> <laughs> and her name was Carolyn Kitch. <laughs> Dick, you remember her, right? Dick Corthaz, you remember Carolyn Kitch on How to Succeed? And my name is Carolyn Kirsch. And Mr. Fosse, um, this was early on, and I think he really suffered my embarrassment with me. I think he did. And I stepped back. She, she leaned over and she said, my name is Carolyn Kitch. <laughs> so I kind of skulked as well as I could on a bare stage back. And he came over to me, and he said, you gave a very good audition. It didn't work this time. He said, no, no. And so I kind of left, and I auditioned again for How to Succeed, didn't get it. And this time, because I was young and didn't know what I was doing, and kids probably wouldn't do this today, but I burst into tears. It was the only thing I knew to do, because I had gotten close again. And I went back out there, and I said, Mr. Fawzi, could you please tell me what I'm doing wrong? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, he thought it was from the moon, you know? And he said, you don't know how to sing. <laughs> and I said, OK. He said, go take some singing lessons. I said, great, thank you. Third time I auditioned, walk, got through the dance call again. It was down to a few people. He came down the aisle, and he said, did you take some, some singing lessons? And I said, yes, sir, I did. He said, let's hear you. And that was in the days when every dancer was learning, hey, look me over, like me in here, you know? And we all stood there like this, pounding it, you know. Who's laughing back there? You know. And I did it. And he came down the aisle with a cigarette, with a hat, the whole thing. And he said, you want to go out to Chicago to the company there? I said, yes, sir, I do. And that was my first experience with Bob Fosse. Uh, From there, he called me back into the New York company, and I had my first Broadway credit. Um, years later, I replaced also in Sweet Charity, and, and uh, he was there to rehearse me in Rosie, which was great, that little character role. So I had the benefit of some acting intention with him, which was wonderful. And then Penny and I went out with the first national company of Chicago, and we had Gwen, Cheetah, and Bobby putting us into those roles. So um, that was quite extraordinary. But my relationship with him around Chicago was very difficult. I found him to be so disciplined, such a taskmaster, and all of that I loved. But personally, he felt mercurial to me, and I felt like I couldn't get a grab onto where he was at times. You know, I didn't know him as well as you did. And it, it just kept me kind of jangling, you know? So I can't say that all of my experiences with, with Mr. Fossey were pleasant ones. Um, well, but I have him. He had that heart attack, too. And, I, that's true. And he that's had true. been out for three months, and then he came back after only three months of right. heart surgery. And he was very preoccupied with death yeah. at that time. Yeah. And he was, 
but I owe himself. him a great deal. I owe him a great deal because if you have to start with one choreographer to teach you how to be clean, how to be strong, how to be focused, I would say Bob Fosse would be the man. Good. So. Good quote.